because Brett Ralph's had a real tough night. Rambo's played well in his first game, but we haven't seen much of Nick Lewis and Copeland's dropped a couple. First and 10. Burris has time from the pocket. Jermaine Copeland with the catch. And he's cut down by Ian Logan, the safety, at the Winnipeg 52-yard line. There you go. Just as I mentioned, he had dropped a couple. He comes over the middle, but you can always tell. You know Jock Climbing's listening right now. You can always tell when a receiver is having a bit of a confidence issue because he goes and catches the next one with every part of his body he can. Chest, arm, shoulder, left hand, right hand. Whatever he can get on it, he'll try and cradle it in. Brett Ralph back in the game. There's a pump and go, and Rambo was well covered by Javon Johnson. There's a flag in the backfield and a holding call pending against the Stamps. Javon Johnson, perfect position on Kenyon Rambo. Didn't fool him at all. And, and when Henry Burris does the pump fake, it takes longer, which asks the old line to block for longer. When they have to block longer, that's when they can draw that holding call. Bombers take the down with the yards. Number 64. Penalty is declined. Second down. And they'll take the down. See, Rambo, Kenyon Rambo wanted to try and run the double move here on Javon Johnson. Down the field. Well, he didn't even move. He didn't even do the double move. So the pump fake from Henry Burris was just for show. The senior staff, Jeff Pilon, was called for holding. They decline it, and it's second down. And look at Watson. He took a hit and will be short. This Ian Logan's been active from the safety spot tonight. And it's been down low. Ian Logan has come down underneath, and, and I thought this was going to be a huge collision. Watson, just Derek Watson, just slipped under it because the angle of attack there from, from Logan right here. Watch his angle coming down. And this looked like it was going to be some kind of collision. And now it's third and four from the stamp top pitch. Stays on. First down, Nick Lewis. Here, Luke Labay was there, but not before Lewis moves the chains on a gutsy third down call from John Huffnagel. Gutsy, but the clock is an enemy now for the Stamps. They got to try and continue to push the push the football and take some chances. Nick Lewis recognizes the zone drops from the linebacking core and just curls up in front of him. First down, Calgary, Winnipeg, 34-yard line. Burris steps up, guns to the end zone, and Copeland was all tied up with the rookie, Jonathan Hepney, there again. A matchup of former Tennessee volunteers. And it looks like from that reaction, <laughs> they've talked about it. Yeah, Hepney spent some time at a coffee in Tampa Bay with the Eagles as well. I thought it was interesting. He's played both corner and safety at, at Tennessee, which you know means he can cover and he can hit. Four-year starter, which means he could play. Second and ten. Morris has an open man, and Ryan Thelwell has been money in the second half. Well, without him, the Calgary Stampeders really have, have nothing. I mean, they, you know, Thelwell's the guy who's really opened it up. He's stretched the defense. He's got in behind him. He's got the deep one. And, and this time he comes up. I'm going to take a look and measure it. I was going to say first down yardage, but they'll take another look at it. He had to come back for the football. And then good second after, effort afterwards. Just 23 catches last year. He has five here in the second half, just short of the first down. And there is plenty of time. You know, th this is only an 18-point game. The CFL, I've seen at times, inside of two minutes, you can score three majors. So 12 minutes is... You know, when you miss a two-point convert, you're always open to a little second-guessing, and had they kicked the convert, it would have been a 17-point game, a couple of touchdowns and a field goal to tie you wonder if that point becomes big when this night's 
all done. And I'm just wondering if he was just trying to get as many points as possible. Third and inches. Second, third down gamble. And Burris, with a good push, should move the chains again. And again, right behind Tim O'Neill, the center, in his first start. Three years with the Calgary, or in the CFL, two with the Calgary Stampeders, and Tim O'Neill had not started a game until tonight. He has not had any problems with shotgun snaps. He has not had any issues with the snaps directly to Henry Burris, and, and when Burris has had to go on the sneak, he's gone right behind O'Neill. Just under 12 to go. Burris the fake, and then through the hands of Copeland incomplete. Well, you know that one interception by Henry Burris I put on Copeland for for stopping when he probably shouldn't have but but that incompletion has got to go back to Burris that's the danger area and yeah Copeland's mad at himself because he thinks he could have made that catch and he's made it before but that's a high throw in a traffic zone tenth play of the drive second and ten the pump and over the middle big collision Nick Lewis hangs on and Sadiq Shabazz unloads again but it is a stamped first down little patience there from Henry Burris to wait for Nick Lewis to open up first and goal Calgary from the nine Burris for the corner Copeland diving for the pylon do we get a signal I think he made it the officials going to talk about it Copeland still appealing and it looks like it's second and goal from the one only the ball has to break the plane of the goal line he nicks the pylon and you wonder if we'll see a challenge flag was he out of bounds with that right foot? Hasn't hit the ground. That's a touchdown. But was he out of bounds with the right foot before he hit the pylon? Was that right foot out of bounds? If he is, it should be marked at the three. That's right. They're going to take a look. Which makes it a gutsy challenge because John Huffnagel might lose a touchdown in two yards here. No, but you know what is of, of as much concern for John Huffnagel? You're in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. That's, that's a concern, too. If he can win this challenge, he doesn't have to run another play. And he can go right back at it, try and get his defense out there, get a 2 and out, get the ball back, and, and save a play in a few seconds on the clock. I'm just wondering about the right foot. I, I agree with you, Chris. I think he did touch the cone with the ball and, and therefore cross the plane of the goal line. But did he do it with the right foot out of bounds? If the right foot's out of bounds right there, it will be reviewed. but that's a tough angle. And again, if the officials don't mark him out at the three, It should indeed be a major. Well, and, but if they don't have enough evidence to to change the call, overturn the call, it's on the one yard line because that's where the ball was marked, correct? I'm thinking if all they're looking at, did he break the plane? Of course, they're looking at everything in Toronto. Well, that's a tough spot on the field for us to really get the best angle on whether he did step out and, and if you challenge just breaking the plane and the official notices something else in the challenge they can call that as well maybe this angle will be a better one yeah, it's awful tough to tell at that foot it almost looks inbounds from there but that that's a bit of a stretch to say it's conclusive. Heck of a battle between those Tennessee volunteers. Well, and, and this is this is the longest 
review this is how tough this one has been because this new format with the command center in Toronto has been very efficient very quick sometimes inside of a minute this one's taking a little bit longer I would say it's inconclusive whether he stepped out it is conclusive he hit the pylon and whether or not that is what they're going to boil it down to we'll find out very shortly well, and, and Mike Kelly didn't challenge the foot. Huffnagel's wondering if he crossed the plane, so if that's the challenge, and the other evidence is not there to say that his foot was out that the officials would notice, then you're right. Should be a major. We'll see. Again, this is important for Calgary to save valuable seconds. Let's find out what Jake Ireland and Tom Higgins have come up with. After the review, the play it stands as called on the field. That is Calgary's first challenge. They are not tied. Charge the timeout. Well, so they call it out at the one, and well, they gave him some forward progress and said that the ball and his foot was out of bounds and gave him some forward progress to the one. A little surprised. Yeah. Maybe one play from making it all academic. Second and goal from the one. And Henry Burris keeps and scores. And yeah, that didn't take much longer. No, it didn't, but it, it, I'm gonna, it's interesting because that's six seconds. Okay? So six seconds, and you see when 10. 27 go or 10 26 go in the rest of this game. We'll see if that affects Calgary. I think they're going to go for two again. Offense stays out. So now a 12 point game. A 99 yard touchdown drive. The best of the early season. For John Huffnagel's crew, 12 plays, six minutes, and four seconds to hit pay dirt. And now trying to make it a 10-point deficit. Theo Johnson in for blocking. And it is two for Rambo. And it is 28 to 18. Stamp Peters coming on here in Winnipeg. Let's go.